decolonization has lost its way, in the opinion of a leading African political philosopher, whose new book is an intellectual and moral critique of the movement which has seen countries emerge from the control of Western colonial powers. Olufemi Taiwo writes that we should rid ourselves of decolonization because, and I quote, it is seriously harming scholarship in and on Africa. And he addresses in his book against decolonization, taking African agency seriously, to people who are still unsure about the worth of what he calls the decolonizing trope. Now, born in Nigeria, Taiwo, uh, born, born, born in Nigeria, Taiwo is a professor of African pol political thought at Cornell University in the United States, and he is chair of the Africana Studies and Research Center. Professor uh, Professor Olufemi Taiwo, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No, it's very good to have you. So, look, in your view, what's the central thing then that has gone wrong with decolonization? Um, I made a distinction between two senses of decolonization. Mm -hmm. uh, the first was the struggle for independence. And I said, that's a very clear meaning. It had an end date and we can plot how well or how badly it has done. But once the countries got independence, it's over. Now, the second sense of decolonization is what has happened since then, where decolonization is supposed to extend to life after colonialism and almost everything, and I mean that seriously, almost everything that happens in the ex-colonies, at least where Africa is concerned, uh, if it has even a whiff of what happened under colonialism, for this idea of decolonization, we should get rid of it. That's where right. the problem is. Now, okay. if that's meant as a description, it's wrong. If it's meant as an explanation, it has absolutely zero Purchase. Okay, let's, so let's so let's talk about that. People talk about um, the, the the ongoing decolonization of Africa in ju in just that way. Nobody really talks about the ongoing decolonization of the United States, for example, in that way. Although the United States was, of course, once a colony of Britain as well. What's the difference there? Uh, thank you very much. In fact, part of what I did in the book is to take Africa out of that concrete box label, labeled different which was originally manufactured by racist thinkers in the 19th mm -hmm. century, um, and now put the discourse of decolonization back into the global movement of colonialism. And my argument is precisely that if you want to say that decolonization is going on, all less colonies must come under that category. And if they are not coming under that category, why set Africa apart? So the United States, and in the previous book had actually asked what I call, you know, a central question. What do countries like Canada, the US, Australia, um, Nigeria, Greece have in common? They are all less colonies. So if you want to decolonize, decolonizing must ap apply to all of them. If it doesn't, then you need to make a special case for why colonialism is different in Africa than in other places. Yes, colonialism in Africa was different. Even within Africa, it was not a single colonialism that overlaid the entire continent. But those are historical issues, and they have explanatory consequences. But what happens in decolonizing discourse is there is almost no awareness of this. And if there's an awareness, I don't see anybody litigating it. So let's let's talk a bit about the. I mean, for for our listeners, the kind of thing we're talking about here, the the de the the extent to which the kind of issues within within Africa and African politics that the, the term decolonization is is applied, and in your view, shouldn't be. It shouldn't. But what kind what kind of issues are we talking about here? Okay, uh, for instance, if you take liberal representative democracy as emanating from colonialism then decolonizing must actually mean that we should chuck it in Africa. I argue in the book, like many other areas of the world, every country in Africa, with the exception of Eswatini, even Morocco, they have all been trying to put in place what I call an empirical equivalent of the modern state and having governments that answer to their people, recognizing the inviolate dignity of the individual, in spite of all the prattle about African communalism, which I've also written against, by the way, in recent years. Um, so what does that have to do with decolonizing? If you really want to decolonize, because colonialism subverted 
those principles while it lasted in Africa. The expectation was that post-independence, what colonialism lied about, will now be restored. And when Africans organized in unions, organized as political parties, marched on the streets for their governments to be responsible to them, that's exactly what they were struggling for. Okay, but so when I mean when people in in the West particularly talk about the the, the need for for Africa to continue decolonizing, I suppose what they mean often is a way of talking about the uh, the I mean the the, the West the West a sense of Western guilt from for Africa's current problems or many or many of Africans current problems. Do you think that kind of thought is of any value or should should that should that be thrown out along with the term decolonization? Uh, you know what. Um... I have never had any interest in guilt tripping anybody. I have written, uh, in many cases, you know, indictment of colonialism, you know, in Africa. So nobody can call me an apologist for colonialism. But my point is that for all the years that African scholars have been railing against this particular phenomenon, they have been neglecting what they need to do to focus on their own uh, uh, situation and come up with some very critical engagement with how life is thought and led in the continent. So for me, that's always a diversion and it has never yielded any positives. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, you, write, you write about the, the suffocation of African thought. Tell me more about what you mean about that, about, about how decolonization d denies African people agency. Thank you very much. Um, think of it this way. Um, one of the bad things about agency is that it can be applied in ways that are not even productive uh, for the agent. And once we accept that, then we cannot insist that the only time we should recognize African agency is when it chooses what we find convergent with our own preferences. So. Uh, my point is that if Africans want to recreate uh, Europe, as long as they're not doing it under the will of another, that's okay by me. I will criticize them for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody ever accused the Japanese of westernizing because they started copying things you know, uh, from Europe. I don't think anybody's accusing the Chinese now of westernizing because they are building replica European cities, you know, in China at very great cost. Uh, but when Africans do it, immediately we are called, you know, victims of colonial mentality. So when Africans adapt, which is what humans do, anything from any other culture and all that, why is that a no-no? That's my question. Mm. Sure. Do, do, I mean, so... Uh... Do you think that decolonizers themselves? Then I'm, I'm talking about West people, West Western people who talk about decolonization. Are they placing unfair expectations on on Af on African politicians, on African thought that it should that it should that African uh, should, yeah, should yeah. Ab ab abandon all all, all 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 forms of 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 uh, of, of Western structures? Uh, they are actually doing worse than that. They are infantilizing, you know, thinkers right. on the. Uh, they are literally, and I've I've often said. You know, um, if you take African agency seriously, you must also acknowledge that Africans may sometimes make very wrong choices, even in terms of their own welfare. But if you say that every time Africans make wrong choices, they are victims of direction from outside, then you turn them into permanent children. Hmm. There's no halfway between those two options. Tell me a bit about how this impacts on 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 African politics. I guess on a sort of country by country basis. Where are these where are these battles, uh, you know, particularly viciously fought at the moment? Uh, when it comes to decolonizers, as I call them, they are almost a wall when it comes to engaging directly with life as it is led in the continent right now. As I said, the continent is trying to put in place worthy liberal representative democratic regimes. The colonizers are busy saying that's all Western stuff. Mm -hmm. We should look for African solutions. So when African thinkers, going all the way back to the 19th century, if not earlier, who have tried 
to domesticate, you know, these ideas, the colonizers just literally excoriate them, call them names. One of them actually called Senghor, an example of what he called Kafka's ape. Kafka's ape. Mm -hmm. That's an African philosopher writing about Senghor. But meanwhile, I do not see the person taking very seriously Senghor's very sophisticated writings, you know, about philosophy, about politics, about humanism, and all that. When an African thinker like Obafemi Awolowo, whom you never see any decolonizer even acknowledge, you know, says, I am a Democrat. This is where I stand. And I want Africa to have this regime. You can criticize his arguments if they don't hang together. But please okay. don't write as if that makes him illegitimate as an African or as an African thinker. How does how does decolonization impact and uh, decolonization discourse impact on matters other than politics, on science and culture in, in African countries? Does it breed a sort of hostility to certain ways of thinking because they're deemed as as being Western? Absolutely, and that's the reason why I said it's literally killing the future of scholarship in the continent, because once you get your young scholars to get on this road to nowhere you know, where all you are doing is, as I call it in the book, chasing slides all over the place, then you are not doing some very serious positive work. And when you pretend to be doing positive work, you are literally just exhuming all kinds of atavisms, you know, and nativisms that do not advance as if African culture, African ideas have been static, you know, uh, since colonialism, and you can get to some pristine past from which you can strip away all the aggressions of all the, you know, uh, 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 impacts that Africa has had going back to Islam, relationship with, you know, Greeks, relationship with Asia that the archaeologists are now finding out on the East African littoral. All these do not show up and all your young people just want to decolonize boiling water. It's, it's that bad right now. <laughs> Understood. Well, thank you very much. That is Olufemi Taiwo. And the book is Against Decolonization, Taking African Agency Seriously. And it is out now. And thank you very much indeed, Professor, for coming on to tell us about that. Um